Welcome back, everybody, to the Selling with Love podcast. This is your host, Jason Mark Campbell. And what I want to do, since we're fresh off the new year, we're setting all some resolutions. Uh, For those of you who would have attended the session we did last week, we really started asking ourselves some questions. What goals are worth setting? And what I want to do today is maybe give you a bit of a better framework. And I have a very exciting gift to offer to anyone who would love to have a blueprint on how to set some goals for your business that has saved me so much back at the time when I was at Mind Valley. And I do need to start with giving some love to Ajit Nawalka. For those of you who aren't familiar, Ajit is the Evercoach leader at Mind Valley, which is the Mind Valley platform that teaches people on how to become coaches. And he's been a guest on this podcast a few times. When he was my direct manager, this is back in 2013, which by God, that would be 10 years ago. <laughs> I remember being given a huge responsibility to run an entire department and it felt like a million things needed to be done. And if you're in any kind of entrepreneurship, maybe starting your own business, maybe you're in sales and there's so many things that you feel need to be done yesterday that your mind might be going something like this. Wow, okay, there's a thousand things to do. So I'm going to start checking my emails. Then I'm going to look, oh my God, I forgot. There's a bunch of tasks I need to work on. So I'm going to start working these tasks. If I just, okay, I'm going to make a giant task list. And then you start writing out this task list. You're like, I'm just going to start, you know, crossing off these things one at a time. And it almost feels like you're running around like a headless chicken. And this is something that's quite interesting, especially if you are in entrepreneurship, is that this to-do list will continue to grow. I thought I'd reach a point where, okay, once I get all of these things done, finally, only then I'll start to have a more manageable to-do list. But if I continue to just look at things that I want to accomplish without stepping back, without looking at the bigger picture, it always feels like there's a million things to do. And it seems like the deadline for each and every one of them is yesterday. It's like, oh my God, I need to be sending out emails. I need to make sure I have some social media posts. I need to record these videos. Oh yes, I need to update all of these things in the process. And what I want you to do first off, if you're listening to this, is to take a step back. (sighs) If we're just being reactive to our environments around us at all times, it actually takes away the possibility for us to free up our mind to think strategically and start making more long-term plans. And this is why I need to give a heads up to my former direct rapport, which was Ajit, which when he saw me trying to run this department, I was trying to take care of the clients, get new clients, manage a ton of things in the process. He sat me down into a room and he made me do a powerful exercise, which allowed me to actually put together a plan on what are the things that I need to do in the next year, in the next quarter, in the next month, and then simply break it down to a priority for the week. And I don't know if you have a specific framework that you use to be able to do more long-term planning, but there's something beautiful that happens when you start to zoom out and start thinking, what would be the theme and big accomplishments that I would like to do for the year? It takes away the immediacy and pressing needs so we can start thinking about the big wins, basics of goal setting. And in any business, you'll find they usually operate on a quarterly basis. And what I love to do every single year is start with setting out these yearly goals and then break it down to what I can accomplish in a quarter. Because a month feels a little short. And every time you set a goal for the month, and if it doesn't have a longer term anchor, it feels like we'll be spinning our wheels or it doesn't seem like we've accomplished enough. But it's as we start to compound these goals that we start to see that, wow, there's so much that I got accomplished after this month, after this quarter, after this year. I've been following this goal method for years now. And what I found very fascinating is that the goals that I've set for 2023 were actually so similar to my 2022. And that only comes from doing this exercise so many times that I've now being able to get more clarity and consistency in my long-term goal setting because it's always working towards the same and more of what I've already identified to be the priorities of what I want to work on. The first times I did this exercise, a bit of a mess. A lot of things are just about trying to nail it. What is my product? What am I building? Am I working on my personal brand? Am I trying to get a job? Whatever it is that you're trying to figure out and is important to you right now, your first time setting goals might be a little messy and that's okay. But just the fact of setting it will actually be something that you can measure and start working towards. And I find it so funny because I think it was back in 2012, 
I think I wrote a blog post, which is about why I don't set goals. So I could always have the flexibility. And if you're someone that's like, oh, goal setting restricts me to possibilities and opportunities. And I had set that as a goal that I don't need to set goals. And I'm so happy I did that because now I can look back and realize I think I was wrong. I definitely know that setting goals has been able to accelerate my progress, accelerate my growth. And even the fact that I spent that year saying I won't set goals allowed me to measure the progress and have a baseline to be able to measure against, which from now the point where I do set goals, everything gets more clear, everything moves forward, and I get to lead my team more effectively because they get to see what is inside my head more effectively. If an opportunity rises, you can always adjust this. But just like, uh, and I hate to use a war example, but I believe it was a general from America that says you have to lay out the best plans, but the moment the first bullet is shot, your plans usually all change. But the fact that you've taken the time to plan makes you so much more prepared to handle whatever is coming. I hope that for your business, you won't have to deal with bullets, but instead, maybe there'll be great clients that'll be coming in. Maybe it'll be an influx of traffic. Maybe you'll have a post that goes viral. Whatever is the best thing that could ever happen to you, in this case, having taken the time to build a plan will be so powerful. So how does this exercise work? Well, on the longer term, you set up your annual goals and see if there are some key metrics you want to hit. This could be a number of clients. This could be a revenue number. This could be possibly making sure that you have a defined product. And I don't know what stage of business you are at. As I've mentioned, some of you are just trying to nail it. And what I mean by that is you're just trying to figure out what business you're actually in. You have to be talking to customers. You have to be creating products, putting offers together. So you can get to a point where you know that you have something that you want to continue working on and move forward with it. Maybe you're at a different stage. Maybe you're trying to scale it. Maybe you already have your core offering and now you're trying to figure out how do I convert better? How do I get more traffic and get more sales? And this is the big question you have to ask yourself when you are in the process of scaling the business. And so in my case, I'm at the scale it phase. So I'm looking at what are my traffic channels? What am I going to streamline? How am I going to put this into a way that my quarterly goals this month is to make sure that I am autopiloting a lot of these scaling activities. So whatever is the goals that you want to set, and by the way, the gift I'm going to be sharing at the end of the episodes, definitely stick around because you'll get to see exactly what that snapshot looks like and how you can use it as well. Because once you have that quarterly goal in place, you can now start understanding what are going to be the most important things you can do this month so it helps you get closer to the quarterly goal. And everything wraps up to the higher layer. And once I have that monthly goal, very interestingly, again, referring back to what Ajit has shared with me, is he called it the fortresses and the knights. I'll call them the must-dos and might-dos. Is It's very interesting if you can set one priority for the month, which is something you must do this month. It is your commitment for the month. And if you want to add something else, you can put it into a might-do column, which would be nice to do, but not going to be hard on yourself if it doesn't happen. And once you've set that for the month, then you can start understanding what are the weekly priorities that'll get you closer. The point of this exercise is that instead of reacting to the to-do list that you come up in the moment, which is what is urgent, finding things that are urgent, we can find plenty, but understanding what is important versus not important requires everything to be anchored into a new dimension, which are your priorities. Everything's important when you don't have priorities. But once you've done the goal setting exercise, you actually start understanding what's important so you can filter out the things that are urgent and not important, which are some of the things we spend most of our time on when we don't have any direction. So with that, I wanted to share a very cool gift. It's an exercise I did with all the Selling With Love members, and I'd love to be able to share it with you as well. I have a blueprint of my goal map for 2023. And in that, you can see what are my annual goals, what are my quarterly goals, my weekly goals, and my monthly goals. And you can see how I've structured mine. And there's a template that you can use to structure yours as well. Would you be interested in having a copy of this to help you set your goals for the year? It's the exact same framework that I get all of the students of the Selling With Love membership to use so they can set their goals and we keep them accountable week after week to make sure that they're accomplishing that. If you would love to have a copy of this template, I would love to hear from you and I will offer it to you for absolutely free as a perfect way to start the year and set more than New Year's resolution, but to set your business goals in a beautiful way. All you have to do is send me an email. I would love to connect with you. Just say in the subject line, I want the template and I'll know exactly what to send you. And you send this over to jason at 
jasonmarkcampbell.com and you will get this sheet for absolutely free. Use it as you will. Be inspired with the way that I've structured my goals so that it can help you make sure that you're not just running around trying to get a thousand things solved yesterday, but you have a cadence, a progress sheet, priorities, and a beautiful way to start the year with a bit more peace in your mind and beautiful goals to strive for. My name is Jason Mark Campbell. Hope this actually helps you get your 2023 started on the right foot. And if you want a copy of that template, we'll be happy to share it with you. Jason at jasonmarkcampbell.com. And until next time, keep going out there building a beautiful ethical business. And of course, keep selling with love.